Many people assume that fossil fuels are still the predominant source of energy because they're the cheapest. While this might have been true a decade ago, the tables have drastically turned since. Onshore wind and solar are now the cheapest sources of energy from new power plants and cost less than gas, geothermal, coal, and nuclear. Over the last 10 years, the cost of solar has declined by a staggering 90%. In 1956, solar power cost $1,825 per watt and was only used to power satellites. Since 1976, however, each doubling of solar capacity has caused the cost of solar panels to decline by 20.2% on average. Utility-scale solar now costs as little as $0.7 per watt, and utility-scale solar arrays are now the least costly to build and operate. This decline in costs hasn't been limited to just solar. The lifetime costs of new wind farms have also come down by 71% over the last 10 years. So how did solar become so cheap? The decline in the cost of solar energy can be attributed to learning curves and virtuous cycles. The demand for solar power was initially fueled by the need for solar to power satellites. As more solar panels were produced for satellites, their prices declined. This encouraged the adoption of solar for purposes beyond the construction of satellites. Technology improvements and economies of scale led to further declines in costs till solar was eventually a viable general purpose source of energy. This decline in cost was also facilitated by the investments of the US government into the development of modern photovoltaic technology. This made them more cost effective for manufacturers to produce and resulted in an increase in the amount of energy that the cells themselves were able to produce. It goes without saying that a fall in the price of fossil fuels to match that of renewables is simply just not possible. One, they're in limited supply. Two, mining them is an extremely costly process. Sunshine and wind, on the other hand, are free. This means that as the industry grows and the technology improves, their costs decline rapidly. As the costs of solar have decreased, there has been a definite increase in the deployment of solar power around the world. In 2019, for instance, 72% of new installed energy capacity came from renewables, while overall renewable power capacity around the world has increased by more than a factor of three over the last two decades. This has been accompanied by a mass closure of coal plants and an increase in the use of natural gas, which emits 60% less carbon dioxide than coal. However, oil still accounts for a large share of emissions because of its heavy use in transportation, and solar and renewables in general still form a relatively small proportion of overall global power sources, and definitely not enough to reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases at the rate necessary to curb the worst impacts of our warming climate. Given the exponential fall in the cost of solar power, and the fact that it is now the cheapest energy source available to us, this raises an obvious question. Why is solar power not being deployed pretty much everywhere? So here are the factors preventing the widespread adoption of solar power. As I've already discussed, the deployment of solar power is significantly less than it should be given the dramatic decline in the cost of its deployment over the last decade. This is because investments, government policies, and infrastructure are still skewed in favor of fossil fuels. Here are the main factors that are preventing the widespread adoption of solar. One, high upfront costs. The initial cost of solar panels and their installation can be quite high, making it difficult for some individuals and businesses to afford the investment. That said, when it comes to the development of new power plants, renewable energy plants are actually cheaper to build than those that use fossil fuels to run. The lower cost to keep them running is bolstered by a regulatory framework that also makes it more profitable to keep them in operation. This increases the likelihood that those fossil fuel plants will remain in operation till the end of their life cycle. This, however, may change as the cost of deploying renewables continues to fall and may eventually become cheaper than the cost of adding capacity to fossil fuel plants. In 2020, the lifetime cost of utility solar was $31 per megawatt hour and $26 per megawatt hour for wind, while the cost of increasing capacity was $41 per megawatt hour for coal and $28 per megawatt hour for natural gas. Limited availability, intermittency, and grid integration. While solar power can theoretically be generated anywhere there is sunlight, the availability of sunlight varies significantly depending on the location, time of day, and weather conditions. This can make it more difficult to generate sufficient amounts of solar energy in certain areas and at certain times. This makes solar power a less reliable source of energy than traditional sources. This is compounded by the fact that the best places for renewable power generation, especially wind, 
often don't have much population density. This is problematic since old electrical grids often don't have the ability to distribute power generated from renewable sources over large distances, and the integration of solar energy into the existing electric grid can be a complex and challenging process. The energy generating capacity of traditional power plants also can't be ramped up and down suddenly. So for instance, they're in greater use at night and produce less during the day. As a result, they need to be kept running at a certain output throughout the day to maintain energy stability and consistency in the grid. The third point has to do with batteries. While the challenges talked about in the previous point can theoretically be overcome, batteries to store excess energy still remain prohibitively expensive despite technological improvements and significant cost decreases. According to the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA, the cost of lithium-ion batteries, which are the most popular type of battery used in solar power systems, has fallen by more than 85% since 2010. However, the cost of batteries for solar power systems can still be relatively high compared to other components of a solar system, such as solar panels. The capacity of battery storage systems, especially the lead-acid battery systems that are typically used in home systems, is also limited. Lead-acid batteries have low energy density, which means that they're unable to hold much energy per kilogram of weight. Newer battery technologies with better energy density, such as lithium-ion batteries, are now becoming more common, and as previously mentioned, have seen their costs decline over time, but they're still significantly expensive. However, as technology continues to improve and economies of scale are achieved, the cost of batteries is expected to continue to decrease in the future, making solar power systems more affordable and accessible to a wide range of users. The decreasing costs are increasingly making it more economically viable to store energy generated during the day for use during the night, which is essential for grid stability and more widespread adoption of solar. Government policies and regulations can also play a role in the adoption of solar energy. In some areas, there may be limited financial incentives or other support for individuals and businesses to invest in solar energy systems. In addition to hefty investments in fossil fuels, existing contractual agreements between utilities and energy producers and mining companies are also preventing progress towards renewable sources of power. With a limited increase in overall annual electricity consumption, there is not much motivation to make the shift away from traditional sources of energy. So rounding up, solar power deployment has increased significantly over time. Despite progress, however, solar power and renewables in general still generate only a relatively small proportion of the total energy used globally. Much still lies in the way of the mass adoption of solar, but as the cost of solar continues to fall and governments around the world increasingly create policies conducive to the adoption of renewables, the tipping point for the mass deployment of solar might be closer than ever. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like it, and let us know in the comments what topics you'd like to see us cover in future.